Hey everybody, in this video I gotta explain the return keyword in C. Return will return a value back to where you call a function. When you call a function, the function can send something back. It's as simple as that. Here's an example. What we would like to do is take a few integers and square them. We'll say int x equals 2 times 2. Int y equals 3 times 3. Int z equals 4 times 4. And then let's print the results. Let's print. We're displaying an integer. We need a format specifier of d. We'll display x. Then we'll need a new line. Then we'll do the same thing with y and z. y z. So this does work. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. Wouldn't it be nice if we had a function, and we can call that function to square a number? Well, we can do that. Let's declare a function. The first step to declaring a function is you need a return type. A return type precedes the name of the function. For now, we'll write void. We'll fill that in momentarily. We'll create a function to square a number. But we have to pass in a number. We have to set up the parameters. We will accept an integer of num. We'll declare a local variable of result equals the number we receive times the number we receive to square it. Now, when assigning these variables, we can just call these functions and then pass in a number. Square the number 2. Square the number 3. And then square the number 4. But we're missing one thing. Our function doesn't return anything. We're passing in 2, squaring 2, and then storing the result. But we're not actually doing anything with it. What we can do is use the return keyword and return a value or variable back to the place in which we call a function. Once we have our result, let's take our result and return it. Return our result. If you're returning a value or a variable, you do have to list the data type of what you're returning. We're working with whole numbers. We're going to return an int. So replace void with int. And this should work now. It does. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. After calling a function and returning a value, just imagine at the end, we're replacing this function call with that value. 4, 9, 16 in this case. We can simplify this code too. Instead of creating a local variable of result, we can just return num times num. Then we don't need to declare a local variable. And that's more concise. There's less lines of code. If these were floating point numbers or doubles, we'd have to change the data type of what we're returning. Let's say we're returning a double. The parameter for num will be a double int x will be a double, same thing with y, and z. The format specifiers will be lf. Let's pass in some numbers including decimal portions. 2.1, 3.2, 4 3.3. And here are the results. Let's create a function to cube a number. We'll return a double, the return type will be double, the name will be cube. We need to set up the parameters so we can accept arguments. We'll receive a double, which we will name num. We're going to return num times num times num. That's going to cube a number. So let's cube 2, cube 3, cube 4. 2 cubed is 8. 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64. Here's a few more examples. This function is going to be age check. We'll check if somebody is 18 or older. We'll return a Boolean value this time. Boolean age check. We have to pass in an int of age. Now, if we're working with Booleans, we'll need to include the following header file. Include stdbool. Dot h. Once we receive an age, we'll check if our age variable 
is greater than or equal to 18. Now, since we're returning a Boolean, we can return true or false. If age is greater than or equal to 18, we'll return true. Now, this part you don't have to explicitly write, but just for readability and teaching purposes, else I'm going to return false. If age is greater than or equal to 18, we'll return true, else we'll return false. So this is a reusable function. We can use it whenever we call it. Let's create an integer variable of age, set it equal to some age. Using an if statement, I'll check if call our function of age check, pass in our age. This function is going to return true or false, depending on what the age is. If that's true, why don't we print the following? We'll print, you may sign up. Perhaps we're signing up for a credit card or a membership or something, and you have to be 18 or older. Else we'll print, you must be 18 plus to sign up. Age is 21. This will result in, you may sign up. If age were 12, you must be 18 plus to sign up. Here's one last example. We'll create a function to return the greater of two numbers. It'll return an integer. We'll name this function getMax. We have to pass in two numbers, two integers. Int x, int y. Now we'll check if x is greater than or equal to y, we'll return x. x is the bigger number. Else, we'll return y. Return y. Within our main function, we'll create a variable of int max equals call the get max function, then pass in two numbers, two and three. Then print the result. We're displaying an integer. We need a format specifier of D. Then print our max variable. Well, it's three. What about four and three? Well, it's four. Or four and five? It's five. So in this example, we have two different options to return, x or y, depending on which number is bigger. All right, everybody, that is the return keyword. It returns a value back to where you call a function. When you call a function, at the end, you can return something. Just imagine that after the function resolves, we're replacing that function call with a value. Another important detail, too, is with the main function, at the end, we're returning 0. We're returning an integer. 0 serves as an exit code. If we return a number that's not 0, that means we have an error in our program. That's why at the end of the main function, we return 0. And well, everybody, that is the return keyword in C.